All right, well, here we are. I'm Donald Hill at the River Ministries here at Canadian, but uh, today I have actually traveled down to Sarah, Oklahoma in the, in the home of Eric Easter. And so uh, today we just want to sit around here and just visit a little bit about uh, what it means to live a resurrected life or what's your story in living that resurrected life. And so I've known Eric for the past few years and we've got very acquainted and, and I love his story, but uh, I love his heart and, and uh, we can... I think you'll see some of that as we go along here just a little bit. But, Eric, I just want to ask you the question, what does it mean to you, or what is your story in living a resurrected life? So I've kind of got two, two resurrected life stories, Donald. Uh, I grew up in a denominational church, and uh, I was saved as a kid. And uh, I was, it was kind of a scare tactic, you know, and I got saved so I wouldn't go to hell and, and so I could go yeah. to heaven. And uh, that was one resurrected life, and then got off track a little bit. We'll talk some more about that. But the the second time around, when I came back to the Lord, it was uh, I would say that I've been living a kingdom resurrected life now, and that's uh, that's the life that the Lord has for all of us. And so, you know, as a kid growing up, I was in a, a denominational church, and like I said, I kind of got scared into making a decision. And uh, I had I did a lot of things out of what I felt like I had to do to be a good Christian, you know, reading my Bible and and uh, praying and going to church all the time and just all the things that that we do out of duty sometimes, you know. And uh, I kind of had a I had a thought I was a little bit better than other people attitude, you know, some of the kids at school that didn't go to church and uh, that might not know as much uh, Bible scripture and and uh, pray as much as me, you know, I kind of looked down on them, and uh, I was a little bit of a judgmental Christian, so um, four days before my 21st birthday, my mom got killed in a car accident, and I uh, got mad at God and went off into the drug world for a while, and uh, when I came back out of the drug world, um, I got around uh, Andy Taylor and Cody Custer, Daryl Perry, Buddy Southers, um, Charlie Kingsbury, a lot of those guys, they really helped me uh, early on in coming back, but that's where I kind of came under what I would call a kingdom resurrected life, you know, and, and uh, I'd go out there with my problems and tell them, you know, this is what I'm going through, what do I need to do, and uh, rather than telling me what I needed to do, they did probably the best thing they could have ever done for me. They pointed me to the Father and told me, yeah. you know, he's always speaking to you, so what do you think <clears throat> the Father's telling you? I didn't know anything about that, and so they'd tell me, well, you go home and pray about it for a few days, and if you haven't heard anything from the Father, then come back and we'll talk about it some more. So I did. started hearing things from the Father, and, and the Father, that you know, following his spirit, that's, you know, to me, that's a kingdom-resurrected life, and, and instead of doing things out of duty like I used to do them. Now I do them because I want to. I want him to live through me to affect mm. other people and things. So, um, you know, it's just been a whole different perspective. Uh, you know, all the stuff that I went through, you know, the drug world, that when you think you're up here and other people are down here and then you go up into the drug yeah. world, it kind of takes you down here. So then you come back and you figure out that we're all right here. We're all equal in, in God's yeah. eyes and he loves us all the same. So, <clears throat> You know, just uh, being being able to let the Lord live through me and follow His Spirit has taken me uh, to a lot of places and got me to a lot farther in life than I really ever could have been, you know, if I wouldn't have been walking with the Lord and walking in His kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Well, those guys gave you some tremendous wisdom. And uh, they, some of those same guys give me some of that same wisdom, you know, and teach me how to, to in fact, Andy's the one that led me to the Lord and, you know, first thing you know he's teaching me that it stuck into my life is that well what what's the lord telling you, you live your life according to what he's telling you not to what other man thinks or or anything but only what he tells you and so knowing that we had freedom to hear the father was a big deal it was a very big deal for me and i know it was you as well and so because you did come out of the drug world and there, and things begin to change but uh uh, your story is pretty unique because uh, what the enemy meant for harm, the Lord has used for good. And so where was some of that with you now? Well, so, you know, I just feel like the Lord, he took care of me because of that decision that I made as a kid um, to believe in Jesus 
Um, the Lord, even when I was in the drug world, I believe that he was watching out over me. Uh, he mm -hmm. was protecting me even through all that. That's how much our Father loves us. Yeah. But uh, coming out of it, you know, I kind of always thought that, you know, well, I've done all this bad stuff for 13 years in the drug world, so I'm going to have to go through all this bad stuff. You know, he's going to punish me. That's not our Father, you know. Um, Luke 15, the story of Luke 15, that Father and that story, that's the Father that I experienced when I came out of the drug world. You know, he started blessing me. Yeah. right off and so you know there was a lot of people uh, in town that thought uh, he's never going to change and rightly so they hadn't seen anything other than the drug dealer and the drug addict Eric Easter for 13 years so rightly so that they thought that way of me but there was something that changed that time in me you know the Lord did something supernatural and and so after after a few years you know some people started taking notice and I was trying to help all the other addicts, I was going back and trying to get the ones that I'd left in the drug world that were my friends, you know, and I was trying to get them coming to church and all those things, so going to recovery meetings, and there was people that took notice, you know, and Judge Roper here in, in Beckham County, she was one of those people, and, and she uh, asked me about coming on the drug court team here as a volunteer just to give them a uh, drug addict's perspective, you know, and try to mm -hmm. help her and the rest of the team figure out how to help these people and get them off of drugs and onto yeah. a sober life. So I volunteered for about four and a half years for uh, Judge Roper doing that. And then about two and a half years ago, uh, she hired me as the assistant drug court coordinator here for Beckham <laughs> and Roger Mills County. So that's that's what following the spirit. That's what, because there's nothing that, uh, it's nothing. I just walked out what I was hearing from the Spirit, and that's why yeah. I'm where I'm at. I take no credit for it. I just give all the credit to the to the Lord, following His Spirit. You know that He with Him all things are possible, and that's a pretty big turnaround right there. And the Lord's the reason why. Yeah, well, you know, to go from to go from a deal of being doping and selling dope, and then to go in and be more or less a almost a type counselor. Yeah. Into 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 for the court for the for the county and stuff and so that only God does stuff like that yeah. you know that that's a big deal in itself but you know that's still not the whole jet finish of the story there either because you also now have another job at the church yes so they're the first ones uh, there was Mike Fields he's the first one that gave me a job there was nobody wanted to hire me here in town yeah. because of my past and I don't blame any of them I wouldn't have hired me either uh, all the stuff that everybody's seen from me for 13 years but Mike Fields gave me an opportunity to go to work at a at a lube changing oil and semis and I did that for a couple of years and was faithful to that job and and Andy and them uh, out there at Trinity Fellowship, they're actually the first ones that gave me a, sh you know, a shot to when, you know, I was on probation still. And they, I think two years, I'd been clean for two years and uh, still on probation. And they asked me to come on staff at Trinity Fellowship. And man, that turned a lot of heads in town, you know, because people <laughs> were still a little iffy about, you know, he's sure. on probation, he gets off probation, he's gonna be right back to doing what he was doing. but. Lord did something something supernatural, and it, it stuck, you know. And so um, went to work out there, and I've been there now. I think that was in 2010, so I've been there 10 years now and wow. started out working wow. in the benevolence stuff and uh, the recovery stuff and then still do some of that. And then uh, about mm, four, four years ago, I guess, started working with the youth, and it wasn't something that I set out to do, but it was something that, that I feel like the Lord, you know, he kind of gets you over where he needs you sometimes. So it's been great for me. It's helped me grow a lot um, as a person, as a Christian, as a, um, just a, a leader, you know, because sometimes I, I don't look at myself the way other people do, and that's what the Lord, he's trying to get me over there where he needs me to where, mm -hmm. where I can where I can lead others, you know, uh, in the things of the kingdom. You know, it, it's, uh, you're sitting here sharing some things, and I want to throw this in because I know that uh, your home life changed a lot. And from where you were in the drugs and all that, you've, ra you've raised some beautiful kids now. And uh, just sent one off to college yes. and just uh, got in. I don't know what that does to daddy's heart, but uh, you, know, you, you and your wife, you know, you're, you're in a different place than you used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there's more joy oh, yeah. to go around now. But just the, the thankfulness that I know that you have of seeing where your kids are at today to where... If you'd have continued on the path you were on, 
to where they, they'd be today. Yeah. I mean, so, but you also said that you're very involved with the youth there at the church now. And that's something that is really spread out to more than just Sarah, Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah, we, we're, so we're kind of a regional church. So we have kids from Elk City, uh, Merritt, um, Eric, Sarah, Cheyenne, Canute. We've got kids from s several, com you know, schools and communities around here that come to the youth program. So uh, we had, I think we've got, we've got in the 30s in the high school, me and Cody Custer, we work with the 9th through 12th grade. And then I just have a bunch of other great help. We have a kindergarten through second grade. Uh, class that my wife and my oldest daughter uh, Jenny that they worked with and then uh, third through fifth grade the Norths from Eric they work wow. with them and then uh, Dustin Smith and John Pickens they work with the sixth through eighth grade uh, boys and Kelsey Pickens works with the sixth through eighth grade girls so I have a great team of people you know that have come in and helped it takes a lot to pull that off you know taking you care bet. of kids and you bet. feeding them on Wednesday nights and that's what we've all every one of us that have uh, that have stepped up to do something for the kids. We've all grown through this. We may have learned more than the kids. We probably did learn <laughs> more than the kids have, you know, and we learn things every every year, and uh, we just get a little bit better at it every year, and, and some of that's through making mistakes, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. mistakes are what we have to do to learn a lesson, so I've learned a lot of them that way, Donald. Yeah, well, you're not alone in that. <laughs> uh, you, you brought up my wife a while ago. I want to brag on her a little bit. You know, she's tougher than me. She went through a lot of stuff. You know, I wasn't the nicest guy when I was on drugs, and ashamed of that now you know but she went through some uh, me put my hands on her and things like that and uh you know we, we had some tough times but it's it's great now we've got a great relationship and the yeah. deal with our kids that you were talking about you know if the lord wouldn't have stepped in and intervened you know i, I work with people in the drug court program all the time and I just see how it it, where it goes down through generations from the parents to the kids and all of that. So, so I'm just very very thankful that um, I broke that cycle, you know, because I now that I'm on this side of things, and I sure would have hated for my kids to to go down that same road. Yeah, well, you know, I think that's important that we bring that out a little bit because that is something that a lot of people deal with. If it's not, not necessarily drugs, but I mean, it can be a prescription drugs, it can be, but di the different addictions that people can come up with. And you know, and so uh, I think it's important that uh, dads especially step in and just, and be the man that God created them to be. And so, and, and as long as you're hung up in those addictions, you never will be. You may feel like you are, but you're never going to be the man that God called you or created you to be to give your kids the opportunity to live a resurrected life because you want the best for your kids, and that's what, you know, we all do. And so I think that's one thing that I hope people can get a hold of is that, you know what, I can make a difference, and it starts right here in my own life. Yeah. Let me change my life first, and then the rest of it begins just to fit into place because there's no work in it after that. I mean, I've heard people call it a no sweat ministry, but you know, and it means that you know what, if if I just surrender myself, he does the rest. He does. Yeah. Sure. Got this going on. Yeah. He take, takes care of all this out here. Yeah. You know, Andy and them, they taught me that a long time ago and said get that relationship going on with the father. If you put that first and work on that, he'll yeah. help you work out all the other stuff and it all it's all in his timing too, you know. Some yeah. things we want it to happen right now and it's just not meant to right now it's later down the road yeah so. I mean, you gotta teach you something else first <laughs> yes yes <laughs> sure does so well where do you see yourself going wherever he leads me so. just follow his spirit i didn't think i would be where i'm at today you know but i just keep following his spirit and try not to get too far ahead of him yeah well, I know you've been you've had the opportunity to come to Canadian. I know a few other places around that you've been able to go and to to share, actually to go brag on your father, your yeah. heavenly father. Yeah. And you know, and that that's one of the greatest blessings that you can ever do is to to be able to just to go share about an intimate personal relationship that we have with our heavenly father. And and I've I've heard your testimony numerous times, but it 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 encourages me because you. You, you've walked a path that a lot of people have walked, but they haven't had the same results. There's some of them that they may get over the drugs, but they don't go ahead and engage in a relationship with the Father. 
the way that they need. I've seen a lot of people over the years that would come out of something, but only to find out that they've got a place of void somewhere else. And so they fill themselves with something else. And it may, it could be another addiction. It, it could just be a spirit of loneliness or whatever. And God didn't create us to live in that. He created, a, you know, he says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so how can, if I want that joy in my life I, I, or that strength, to, if I want to overcome these obstacles that I face or that people face, what's the greatest thing that you think that we can do? Man, put in the Lord first and just walking with him, walking in his kingdom and following his spirit. I mean, that's been the answer for, for everything with me. You know, that's, it's, I mean, that's the, the biggest key to me mm -hmm. is that. I think if that one's out of order, the rest of it's out of order, it too. It is, yeah. <laughs> He's the best and, one to get our, our information and our guidance from. Yeah. Well, you know, I've, I, and, I, and I like that because the very thing is, and we've mentioned that we've, we've got some tremendous men and women around us here helping support us. You and I both, we're very blessed men. But, you know, I know a lot of people that whenever they go to coming out of something, they run to somebody that they know's had the same problem before. And how did you do it? Well, you know what? God didn't create you to live their life. So that's not where you're going to get it. You know what? I sit and I think, you know, if, if Jesus is right here with me, and he, said, he promised to never leave you or forsake you, correct? Correct. So you know what? I don't need to go somewhere else. I have the source with me. I need to be asking the source. He is the source. He's the answer to the, he's the solution to every problem that we may face. And if we will truly go ask him and just intentionally, and it may take you a few days, whatever, but you intentionally go and ask him where you need to be, what you need to do. He, he promised to give you a spirit that would lead and guide you. Yep, he's going to do that. And that's what, you know, that's what worked for me. And uh, I don't see any way that it doesn't work for anybody. So that's the advice that I give people. You know, I just give, hey, get hooked up with the Lord. What's the Lord telling you? You know, so that's, it's a great advice. It's never the wrong advice to give give people. Right. You know. Right. Well, I, I think it's the best advice to give anybody. I really do. Because if you miss that part, you, you're never going to, it ain't going to fit. Yep. You're sure. always going to be looking for something else. And so I'm, I'm very thankful to be able to come down here today and to sit and to visit with you about some of this stuff. And I know that there's a whole lot that we could sit and bring out here today. But who, who is the resurrected life for? For the triune God, Jesus and the Father. Okay. And the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He, he's the one that he says, come unto me. All you who are weary and heavy laden. We all have troubles. We all have trials and tribulations in this world. And you know what? What does he do? He says, come to me. I'm the source. And when we do that, he's going to be there. And he's going to give us the answers we need. I want to share one more thing with you. Because uh, he just showed me, you know, that if I'll... If I will try to look at things, because I, I don't always do this, but every once in a while he'll just really shake me, and it's like, I want you to see things from my perspective, you know. And so for a lot of years, you know, I finally got to peace about my mom dying in a car wreck. You know, I finally came to peace with that and, and uh, got peace from the Lord and all of that. But I really, I just, you know, I was always wondering why, why, why. So 23 and a half years after her death, he showed me, you know, when I got off track after after she had passed away and went off into the drug world, I got some tools from there coming back. He knew that my heart was with him and that I was going to come back to him. He knows the beginning from the end, so he knew all that. And when I went into the drug world, you know, and, and came out on the other side and came back to walking with him, I had some tools to help some other people. Mm -hmm. So from his perspective, you know, I went through all that stuff. And by my own choice, I went through all that stuff. But because of my mom's death, that's why I went through all that. So from his perspective and his purpose, the people that I've been able to uh, help point to the Father and help to beat drugs and all of that on this side of it, you know, it all works together for the good, yeah. for his purpose. Yeah. So sometimes we just got to stop and, and try to see things from his perspective because this life, it isn't about us. It's about him and let him live through us. Yeah, that's a very good word, very good word. 
And you know, I can I can bear witness with what you're giving testimony to there because I tell you when I lost my dad, you know, that was the hardest thing I'd ever I was got so mad at God and I I took a bad road. I took a very bad road for a lot of years and led a lot of people down a bad path. Me too. And so and, and it came to the point where I, honestly one day I was out actually at the cemetery and I mean I was crying and I was drunk and I was messed up and I'm sitting out there and I'm cussing God. I'm mad at him and I'm going, How 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 can you take my dad from me, my best friend? If you're such a good God, how can you take him from me like that? And that's the first time in my life I ever heard the Lord and it's before I was even saved. And I heard the Lord tell me that night, he said, Donald, I did not take your dad from you, but I did receive him unto myself. That got a hold of that got a hold of me, and I began to think. And then it wasn't shortly after that is whenever I was introduced to the Lord, and so and there so things began to happen, and you know what? And so there's somebody out there today. They're walking through some hard trials or tribulations, at whatever it may be, and maybe it may not be the death of a loved one. But it can it can be anything. It could be just the bondages of this uh, this virus stuff that's going on and not being able to work like they normally do. But again, Jesus is still the solution. He is always. Yeah. So, well, you got any closing words for anybody or? I'm good. You're good. I'm good. Yeah. Well, I think you shared a lot there with us, and I know that. Uh, again, Eric, I, I appreciate you letting me come down here and just. Uh, invade your home and your <laughs> privacy here but uh i just want everybody out there to know that you know what it's uh the word teaches us that it says we live we move and we have our being in him and so whatever you get ready to go do tonight tomorrow the next day whatever just remember jesus promised that he'd be with you he's giving you his spirit take time listen to him and just see what happens because I can guarantee it gets better from here. God bless each and every one.